the last course that I did with Enterprise when I started at the beginning of this year, I asked the people in the course, pick a couple of websites, and as soon as we started to look at the websites, I found it quite difficult to find sites that weren't building to standards. A lot of the sites in the last course, as we looked through them, yeah, this site's standards compliant, this site's standards compliant, and I was actually finding it quite difficult to actually find sites that weren't. Accessibility. Most people, because they're building to standards, are including accessibility as well. So accessibility is also kind of, at the moment, more a buzzword than a fear anymore. We're kind of putting in accessibility into our, into our websites, and we're expecting accessibility into, into most of our websites. Those of you that are on the enterprise, that were on the enterprise webmaster course, I assume that most of you have implemented some kind of accessibility into your navigation, for example. Yes? No? Most of you probably have. Definitely, and I can see a couple of faces here, 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 here that have. And I know for sure because I've seen, I've seen some of your code. Technology today, Facebook, okay, yes, it's in decline. Mobile web. Jonathan and I didn't confer at all when we were creating our slides. I created my slides independently. Mobile web is a current technology as well. I've got people in my current course asking me for mobile web or mobile page, web page style sheets. What is, what is my page going to look like on a mobile phone? And we're actually getting our mobile phones out and actually looking at pages. Uh, browser wars. Once again, we're in another stage where Firefox, and those of you that have used Firefox know what Firefox is as a browser, and Internet Explorer. How many are using Firefox in the room? Or something like Firefox in the room? Geeks. Yeah, geeks. <laughs> Internet Explorer? Everyone out there uh, using Internet Explorer. Yeah. <laughs> those of you that do Enterprise Webmaster Course, we usually have two or three browsers so you can test your websites. But basically, we're at a point now where Firefox is taking quite a bit of Microsoft's market with Internet Explorer. So what Microsoft are doing is they're releasing Internet Explorer 8 soon, in the next couple of months, four or five months. Uh, everyone had a look at it on the Enterprise Webmaster Course? You'll be shocked. Your websites look horrible in it. Uh, yeah, it's good. All of you who currently got websites, get ready. Find yourself a web designer quickly. It might be a problem for you there. Yeah, I was, over, I was overseas for Christmas over in Europe again, visiting my friends and family in Denmark. All the people that I went to see over there who are using computers all use Firefox. The general public, they use Firefox as, it, as we use Internet Explorer. They are way ahead in, in the browser walls over there. Uh, they've basically won over in, in Europe already. We're still using, a lot, of, a lot of us are still using Internet Explorer. It's not a bad thing, but uh, it's just something that we keep in mind at the, at the current point in time where actually things are, are starting to shift over to Firefox. Open data. This is the semantic web that John's talking about. The new O. Yeah. The Wait until you see 2010, how many O's are in there? No, we, didn't confer, we didn't confer, I promise you. Sorry? Yeah, very good. <laughs> okay, I've had a long day. Uh, open data, basically making data available. We are aware of Google Maps and Google making data, map data available. A lot of, if you do a search on Google on open data, there's a movement making data available. Basically, it's marking up information so that other, inf other websites can use that information again. So, uh, take for example Access Center. The information that we have on our website may be making that available to other websites and so that they can use our information as well. Have a look at open data if you haven't looked at it yet. This is the, this is the exciting one. Web standards. At the moment, when I say web standards, most people start to think about the existing technologies that we have. And there's only a few of them people tend to think of. They tend to think of, well, XHTML, CSS, uh, accessibility, a couple of things like that. Web standards by 2010 are going to include things like RSS. They are already standards for RSS, but they're going to be even harsher standards for the technologies that are going to be out there. Everyone will be expected to design to standards by that time, I, I, I reckon. So in two or three years from now, people are going to ask you to build a website, and every component that you use on that website is going to have to comply to some kind of standard. There are, not necessarily thought police, but there are technology police coming into force on the web. Accessibility. Uh, I don't think accessibility will be something that web designers will need to think about in the future. That's a, that's a pretty dangerous statement to make. I am banking on our browsers actually doing the accessibility in the future. Looking at this page, looking at the content, we can design it however we like, 
not have to think about accessibility and the browser or the device, the user agent, being intelligent enough to decipher the content on the page and make it accessible for the user. So it's going to be one of those jobs that will eventually move away from web developers. They won't have to do it. We won't be able to use it as a marketing tool anymore because the browsers will do it automatically for us. Technology-wise, Google Ad Manager will be big as well. Okay, so it's the, I won't say replacement to AdSense, but it's the next generation of AdSense. Google's Ad Manager is currently in beta at the moment, basically allowing you to make audio and video and all kinds of adverts available on other people's uh, websites, make it more contextual again. Open ID, uh, Microsoft, who's got a .NET Passport? Anyone heard of .NET Passports? Only the tacky ones, okay? Most of you probably have a .NET Passport already. If you've got a Hotmail account, you've got a .NET Passport, okay? So there are, there are technologies like .NET. One is called OpenID. That's also going to be very big as well. I, I, well, I foresee it's going to be very big. It's basically a passport that you have to be able to access all the websites that you want to access on the web through one username and password. So rather than having individual usernames where you log into every single web website and you put in a password for each of those websites, you have kind of like one ID, one passport. You, you enter it when you first start to browse the web and you can access all of your sites through one identification. IPTV? Who's heard of IPTV? It's very big in Europe. Again, they seem to be, so they seem to be ahead of us. Uh, <laughs> basically, basically, the web is going to be the new transmission medium for TV. Okay, forget digital TV, forget analog TV, IP TV, sending TV over the internet. Phil knows a little bit about this because I think Phil has. You've got one of those boxes, don't you? Yeah. Okay. Basically, you're able to watch things like YouTube and that. It's coming to a point where broadband connections are so fast, or fast enough for us to be able to stream HD TV, high definition TV, over internet protocols. Most of us have at least, what, probably 2 megabyte broadband at home, 10 megabytes, 20 megabytes. Those of us that are on 10 megabytes and above have the ability to actually, if you investigate IPTV, it's available all over the place. Uh, and basically, websites or the interactivity that we have through websites will also be available through IPTV. So you'll be creating your websites. So you've got, for example, the Access Center website. That will be available through IPTV. So those people who are watching TV, you'll be able to create your own adverts and actually make it available on these IPTV channels. There'll be people that will be springing up with all kinds of TV channels very soon. And the CSS technology, for example, already has features in it to support things like IPTV. They are TV style sheets presentation style sheets already available for us to be able to start doing this sort of thing. I don't know if I should do this one here. This one might scare you, because Jonathan mentioned something about Google collecting your information. Who's heard of Form? P-H-O-R-M. No? I think Paul's heard of it, because we discussed it today. Yeah. Uh, Form is a company in the UK. It's also a technology that is being licensed by a lot of companies. Basically, all of the ISPs in the UK have currently signed up to this technology. What it is, is it's an engine that allows them to monitor every click you make on the web. Every keystroke you type into the web, they can gather it. And they can use that information to market to you. So when you're browsing the web, okay, if you've got a form compliant component on your website, you will know what the person that's browsing the site already wants to see. So you can show it to them. Sky, Virgin Media, NTL, those companies have already signed up to this. Uh, and BT, BT apparently, I'm scaremongering here, but BT apparently have already tested it uh, and are going to be implementing it pretty soon as well. Okay, so that's probably the kind of things that we're going to be looking at technology-wise in the future. I'm going to be most interested in this various, tech, various web standard technologies, or web standards that are going to be available for us through different types of technology. I think this will mean for us that people will have to become experts in different areas. So having specialisms, I will be an expert in HTML standards. Somebody else will be an expert in Photoshop design standards, or there'll be standards for virtually everything, and one person won't do everything.